So folks, I hope based on my note I sent to you that you have read ahead, because value chain for some people might be a little challenging. And I know from talking to Dr. Knight, Josanne Knight, even if you did marketing, they do not focus a lot on value chain analysis and marketing or marketing management. It's, you don't do a lot of depth. So here's the principle of competitive markets. The higher a company's costs are above those of close rivals, the more competitively vulnerable you are. So we're talking about here about a company's cost. So first we can say value chain analysis deals with a company's cost management. That's what value chain is all about. Cost management. Hence, you would need to have some kind of basic understanding and knowledge of the accounting function. But let me repeat, it means you will have to have some kind of basic knowledge of the accounting function. You really can't get away from it when you're looking at value chain analysis. So I'm stressing, it is one of the single most important concepts and tools in this course. Hence, I'm suggesting you know it very, very, very well. So value chain is going to be linked back to five forces. It's going to be linked to Porter's competitive strategies. It's going to be linked to market development, product development. It's going to be linked to a whole set of strategies as those that we are going to deal with next week. So before I go on, how many people here might have touched on this concept of value chain before? Okay, don't you? Anybody have touched on it? You have touched on it before? Right, okay. Anybody else? Let's be show of hands so I can have a feel in the back there. Beautiful. Okay, excellent. So for those who don't have not been exposed to it, you have a lot of reading to do. There's a lot of good stuff on the web. There is a site that I normally refer students to that really has good information. It's a, best, a website called Investopedia. It has, it's a reputable site and has really rich resources dealing with issues of costs and cost management and uh, issues of value chain. So you can do, go and do some searches in Investopedia and they normally have nice text write-ups, very lucid explanations. Also YouTube, if you're going to YouTube and you put Investopedia, you should also have some YouTube videos coming up that could be quite helpful to you. Right, Investopedia. So please take the opportunity to check out this site. For those who are interested in doing the financial ratio question, there are normally some very short videos, five minutes, six minutes, but very, very succinct and very well, they're very good in terms of explaining um, different ratios and the meaning of these different ratios. Now, these one, two, three, four, five, six terms on the board of these six concepts are critical to understanding value chain analysis. And in any essay you write on it, or in any case analysis of value chain, you must utilize these concepts. <clears throat> So we're saying you have the primary and secondary value chain, and we look at those sharply. You have strategic cost analysis that you should know well. You have something we call cost drivers. You have cost advantages. You have cost disadvantages, and you have value creation. 
right? Now, I think in the slide online to your question, right, I don't think you might have had some of these looking at the cost variables, et cetera. So what I'll do, once I'm finished today, I'll just upload this slide um, to e-learning for you. So I repeat, these are terms that you need to know very, very well. So when we talk about the concept of value term, we are saying all activities and functions a firm performs in trying to deliver value to customers. So if we think about ourselves, If we think about ourselves, if you go to the campus mart and you buy a patty, or you buy a hot dog, or you buy um, one of the Grand Burger Rolls, or you buy anything, you would expect it meets your satisfaction levels. Right? If it does not meet your satisfaction levels, you will be dissatisfied, and you can conclude, I did not get value for money. And this is the term we hear a lot about, this concept of value for money. So does value for money mean cheap? No. But from a customer perspective, what's the challenge for value for money? From a customer perspective, you have many customers in this room, about 100 students. What's the challenge of value for money? Quality. How it is perceived by different people. So you could go and buy a veg party. That's my favorite. And then Amy buys a veg party, and you come out saying, this is horrible. Amy comes out, yo, this is so nice. Why would that happen? Different tastes, different perceptions. In other words, you might not like the dough hard and crispy. You might like it soft and tender. Amy prefers it thick and hard and crispy. So the challenge for a company now would be, how do you deliver value to customers that you can satisfy a majority? Right? That's what you're trying to do. So if you are in the minority, that you like it soft and tender, but most students at the university prefer it hard, thick, and crispy, then you need to look for another supplier. Yeah. Because they're not going to change the salary for you. Everybody understand that? Yeah. They're not going to change the salary for you because they will quote the numbers. Okay, 100 students, one doesn't like it, too bad. In fact, some companies, the, the, the staff are so distasteful, they actually tell you to your face, well, if you don't like it, go and get it from somewhere else. <laughs> they actually rudely tell you that, you see. Right. So that's the concept. So when you hear about value chain analysis, it is a process of saying, how do I deliver value to customers, which is about perceptions of value. So if it costs more to make it thin and tender, for the, cost, for the company to satisfy you, they will have to increase their cost. So what companies are constantly doing, trying to push down costs. Now, for, this is where the accounting function comes in. Because when you think about the basic accounting function, companies want to increase sales. Because when I increase sales, I am able to also increase my, not profit yet, my revenues. So when I increase my revenues, that does not necessarily mean I will increase my profits. But in order to increase my profits, I need now to do what? I need now to manage my costs or my expenses. Everybody with me? And I'll go through this very patiently. So I'm saying first thing, companies need to increase sales. But in order to increase sales, what do I have to do? 
I first need to get customers to want to buy my product. And how do I get customers to want to buy my product? I market, I sensitize customers, and nowadays what do you do? You get an iPhone, y'all know that we are the richest company in the world now, y'all know that. We are, iPhone people, let me see you please, iPhone people. No. We are the richest, we have, a, we are trillion dollars, we are richer than most countries in the world, so. Uh, we are. Uh, here, like phone people. Samsung, one of these days you will get there. You will get there one of these days, right? You, you understand? So, how do I get people to buy? I need to make them feel a sense that this satisfies my needs. It satisfies my needs. So when we go back here, folks, to this model, and we look at opportunities coming in the environment, opportunities could relate to social and cultural that people in society who really prefer to buy your goods and services or products because you are satisfying needs. So once we are satisfying needs, which is a marketing function of promotion, and in the value chain, you will see shortly there is provision for sales and marketing, my sales would increase. And if I can get people to buy my product, my sales would increase. But here's the point we are saying first, to get them to buy, we need to get people to believe that they are getting value for money which is the essence of value chain analysis and value chain management, I want people to perceive they are getting value for money. But it must happen here first that you first need to convince them to buy. So that when they go through this service experience, they can do what we said just now. What's your, what's your name? With Maxine, I taste the product or I experience the product and I conclude, wow, this is nice. I like this. And you tell people, you've got to try the party from the campus mark. So my sales would increase because more people are buying. And as people buy, my revenues increase. But I need to manage my cost because as sales increase, I have salespersons and marketing. So I need to make sure that as my sales increase, that my cost don't also increase. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So here is where value chain management focuses management and analysis. It tries to ensure that as the marketing people do their job and get sales increasing, that we are now paying attention to keeping costs down. So the more I can manage my costs without sacrificing what? Quality. Quality. I can keep costs down with folks sacrificing quality to continue to meet the needs. I am able to continue to improve my profitability. And there's one other thing now, folks, that even though my sales are increasing, my sales increase by 20%, there is something that could prevent me from increasing my revenues. So I want one of your bright students to tell me, my sales increasing 20% every quarter, but my revenues are not increasing. My friend here will tell me, right here, what would prevent my revenue from increasing as my sales increase? Because I'm good so, it's related to, you're sure, huh? Uh, you've gone back here, you've gone back to, and she's correct, the cost of goods sold would impact on the profits, not revenues. So what would impact on revenues? My friend in the blue. Sorry? The, remember you're talking about sales versus revenues. Wow. Say 
no. I want to say no. Then you sell on credit terms. Excellent. So that I sell something, but I have, you all remember in accounting, 30 days due, 60 days, so we don't bring it to life, folks, in real life. You understand what I'm saying? So when you say 30 days due me, I sold you, but by the end of 30 days, you got to pay. But if you don't pay, you can put it then as a receivable, and as, you, as your receivables increase, Compared to your sales, you will run into trouble. You see, folks? So this is something that could impact. So that's why I like to separate sales from revenues. All the sales mean people have bought. So if I don't have a good credit management system, and people buy the, my good and then determine... You know something? I gotta buy an iPhone. So you buy my chairs and you determine you will buy the iPhone cash and you can't afford to pay the credit terms. It is where now I have a problem in my business that you have not prioritized correctly. So this is something that has to be monitored. And what I'm saying to you, as you write your essays, don't jump from sales to profits because revenues are managing costs, whether the cost of goods sold are things you need to pay attention to. So there's the primary value chain and secondary value chain. They are both important, but the primary will be, will be the one that is directly related to the operations of the business directly related so if it's a hotel the primary would be people working in the housekeeping department the maintenance department people working on the pool um, the front desk staff people if you have a golf course the pool cleaners if you have sit boats this would be the operations where things are done if it's manufacturing it is you're actually producing goods and, and um, cars and TVs and chairs and benches and making clothes. This is where it, these things will be done. You buy raw materials, they are then produced. So if you're making clothes, you buy the materials, you make the clothes, you distribute the clothes, you have the sales and marketing function, you have the after sales service, and all things being done, you eventually can get a profit from that. The support then deals with, these are the office staff. That's the best way you can put it. Support relates to the office staff. That's the, the research and development, people behind the scenes that you hardly see, but are doing a lot of work. The technology that allows the company to function, the IT system, the HR systems, the technology that drives the machinery and the operations, the HR management, right, the management, the, the clerks in the office, right? Um, and then general administration, right? People who do record keeping, collecting monies, the finance department, all of those things will be in support. Everybody with me? So, somebody who hasn't spoken for the whole semester, this is for you. From an accounting, using accounting language, how would cost here differ from cost here? They're both costs, or cost can be found in both. So somebody who hasn't spoken for the semester, how do the cost differ? Who spoke? The semester? Yeah. Let's hear you. How would the cost in secondary value chain differ to cost in the primary value chain? Physical, I said using a cocktail language. Sorry? Tangible. Tangible? Somebody else who hasn't spoken.
Yes, correct. correct. Correct, very correct. So we have Upon logistics, you have the sales and marketing, after sales service, right? So she's correct. Generally, you, if you would find here, these are fixed costs. These are the full-time office staff, the account staff, the HR staff, the managers who manage departments, the IT people, research. And these are variable. Why are, are you likely to find variable costs here? Correct. So, especially in manufacturing environments, like restaurants and bars and kitchens, and people produce tables and chairs and clothes. Because as suppose demand falls, or the business is cyclical, you have a peak for six months of the year. Right, from summer to Christmas, and then it peaks off. You can't continue producing at the same level and pay the same wages. So what you try to do, as demand increases, you increase output. So in operations, there's a bigger demand for the product. So you start to increase production, you bring in temporary staff. Demand falls, you reduce the staff in, in the manufacturing or production environment. And these are people who don't come if you give them, which is an HR issue, if you give them full-time employment, you have a legal problem. So these people are generally paid hourly or weekly. So they're generally hourly paid people that if you only put in 36 hours in a week, you're paid 36 hours. You do 40, you're paid 40. You do overtime, the union might have an overtime rate. You do 20 hours, so people then try to reduce the cost. They might not send you home, but your weekly hours of pay could be reduced or on and off. So one person works one week, and then you're off the next week, and another person works that week. But in, in effect, you're actually reducing their, their full pay, and that's where the variable cost would be. And because you're buying less supplies, that's variable too, because my cost of supplies could fall and increase depending on demand. And then the output, obviously, would fall. So what are the costs associated with distribution? Transportation. What are the costs you would have once you finish a product? Storage. And, and what comes with storage? Huh? Uh-uh, there's something more important that comes with storage. Huh? Energy is part of it, but something more important. Huh? Maintenance, that could be it, but something more important. You all steal to give people things cheap. People steal. So you know things are in the warehouse. Did you understand? Things are in the warehouse in thousands of units. And then what you do. You pilfer, and you steal, and you sell things illegally. Some get caught, some don't get caught. The ones that get caught, you lose your job. The ones that don't get caught, you make a lot of money. <laughs> Sorry? But you have, you have to control. In fact, you know why people do stock taking regularly in my in yeah. because they know when they do a stock take, there will always be variances, and you know the, var the variances don't only come from bad accounting. Variances come from people stealing, mm -hmm. and that's why you do stock taking. You all think stock taking was just a thing you did in accounting, <laughs> right? A simple thing, folks. Once thousands of units are stocked in a warehouse, where the opportunity comes, people will steal. So every day, folks, even in secondary value chain, and let me give you the simple examples of stealing, but you don't think it is stealing. You go to work every day, your child needs paper for school, you get a notebook. You need a pencil, you take up a pencil. Your child needs pen, you take up a pen. They have a project and they want eight by 11 paper, 
You take home 10 sheets of it by 11 papers. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You, you, well, so we call it white collar theft. Little bits of thing every week. So picture you got 300 employees and every week 100 of them carry home two pens, a pencil, two sheets of paper, a notebook. They do? Yes. They still mean they term up not paying them enough money? <laughs> well, you are. Co <laughs> In fact, some workers actually say that. They take it back. <laughs> you ain't paying me enough, so I am subsidizing the income. But folks, honestly, a lot of variance in terms that will push up costs is simple petty stealing. Yeah? It seems simple, right? But it, because it happens so incrementally, every day, every week, every month, and if you've got a thousand employees, picture that every month a bit of paper, picture that every month people take up five sheets of paper or a notebook. It adds up folks to really a couple hundred thousand dollars depending on how big your organization. So picture an organization for that has three thousand employees. Right. Picture three thousand employees. We only think in the Caribbean about five hundred and three hundred. But you have companies that have twenty thousand employees. 50,000 employees, 10,000 employees. So picture them taking up a little bit every day. You understand? And hiding a little bit. I worked in hotel folks for many years. We can stop it. You could not stop it. You can hire all the security you want in the world. <laughs> Can't stop it. <laughs> because it's something called collusion. Once you have things talked up in a place long for months, folks, Things will disappear, and you have to account. And the accountants actually account it. You may hear about that, is that you have to come to a conclusion. There are certain things you need to write off because there's not enough security. Look, let me give you an example, folks. And this is a real life situation. I was in HR in hotel, private. One, one month, we brought in a huge hotel, 30 something acres of a water pressure pump that was from the walls here. It took six men in maintenance to take this pump off the truck. Six men. It was so huge, a massive commercial water pressure pump. Six weeks after coming in, it broke down. It was taken to maintenance and disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say to you? <laughs> and we had security 24/7 at every entrance and every exit, and no and cameras. And nobody can tell us what happened to this pressure. Yeah. But you see, so you see collusion, folks. So in collusion, all you want is collusion between some supervisor, some security and staff, and you will never, ever. But I'm saying you cannot stop petty theft. You try to control it. If you get somebody, they pay the price. But you really cannot stop it. So why companies do stop taking? is that they know, when, especially when you have huge warehouses with thousands of items, they know that when they do a stock take, there will be a variance of X percent. And it happens every year, and they will never find out what happened to these items. Folks, it's very simple. People just take them. So you need to be able to manage both your fixed and variable costs, but the good thing about it with fixed costs What's the good thing about fixed costs? You can, protect, you, you can predict it. You can manage your fixed costs because you know that every month I have to pay X. So give me examples of fixed costs from your accountant. Examples of fixed costs. Rent. 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 Salaries. Salaries. Light. Salaries. Advertising. Advertising. Loans. Interest on loans. You know I have a loan from the bank. I know I have to pay X amount. I have, you can calculate your interest. So these are fake things that you can monitor. But once it comes, folks, here, operations and production. So there are some environments, folks, thousands of units are produced in any one day and put in a storehouse. Once it leaves the production floor, floor, floor folks, and it's stored, there's a probability 
that some proportion of that, and that adds also to the variations in costs that, is very, that are very, very difficult to control. So we are saying here, for you see, this concept of strategic cost analysis is critical that it says, strategic cost analysis looks at a firm's costs relative to its competitors. So it's something like the CPM. In other words, I want to know what my costs are compared to my competitors. Why do you think I need to know that? Why do I need to know that? Yes? Why do I need to know my firm cost compared to my competitors? My friend there, Errol Postale, next to her. <laughs> yes? Madam Flo. I gave you horrible service. I'm not saying her, I'm saying company. Yes, my love. But I'm saying, why do I want to compare my cost to my competitor's cost? Why? No, we talk about cost. Yes. I spend it too much in comparison, yes? That they to decrease your cost. Uh, pretty okay, yes. So tell you um which areas that you have compared Right, you're all other ones that were correct, but his is really bum on where he is saying. I can use it as a strategy to try to gain a competitive advantage, right? Yeah, I can use it as a strategy because I've identified where I have the other words. Remember those words we used earlier? Let's go to them now. I can determine where I have a cost advantage because where I have a cost advantage will lead to an increase in my competitiveness. And where I have a cost at disadvantage, Doing that kind of analysis can help me determine you. I have a significant cost disadvantage, which means my competitors can get an edge on me, and they can, in selling their goods or services, get on a, they can convince customers. What do we? What the word we have here? Better value for money. Come to me. So you cannot operate blind within a particular environment. So we are saying you need to be able through cost analysis to determine your cost advantages, where your costs are better compared to the competitors versus where your competitors actually have a, a, a better cost structure. So if we are into manufacturing, and I did analysis and realized in terms of operations, my competitors have much lower, they can better manage their variable costs. It means that they'll be able to do what? Once they're managing their cost of operations better than me. They, Sorry? Bring in more revenue. So it means that I can not only bring more revenue, what can I do? Eventually revenue. Sorry? Not yet. Where, where a company is able to better manage its costs, what will they then, what will they be able to do in terms of the market? Increase market share. Not market share yet. They will be able to offer a better price to customers. And the more they're able to have better costs than you, they're able to keep their prices down and they can promote it. We offer, you offer it at $5.99, we offer it at $5.10 per unit. Hence, they sell at better cost, same quality, same product. What do you think customers are going to buy? Competitors product. Everybody with me? So what we are doing, folks, you see here with value chain analysis, it actually now blends in to financial ratio and accounting functions. Right? So these are things you would need to pay attention to. The final thing I'll share with you, these are cost drivers. We're saying economies of scale from your economics Learning curves, capacity utilization. In other words, is your company producing the maximum or not? Linkages, 
location and the configuration of the value chain. So folks, what we'll do at next session, we'll just wrap up a couple things on the value chain. I urge you to look at the videos and do some additional reading. For those in tutorial with me, I think we are in TSR 7, which is across, yeah, and across in the other building. So I'll see you in a couple minutes. For the tutorial, some people come to tutorials they're not registered for, other than I give you permission to.